Come on in the room, everyone. Happy Sunday. The Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And while we are still inside of this COVID pandemic and, the, and there are many houses of worship that are now beginning to reopen, there are many houses of worship that, um, that are still doing the online experience, I want you to know that you can make your own home, that you can make your house, your apartment, your condo, your own sanctuary for God, okay? So again, thank you all so much for tuning in. I really am excited about today's message. Today's message is one that I hope and pray is going to be a blessing to you as it has been to me. This is actually going to be a stretch for me as well because it's a text, number one, that I did not know was in the Bible. A text that number two, um, I discovered some things about with regards to, you know, a word study that I did um, on on uh, on some of the things that, that are said inside of inside of the text. But then also this is a text that really sets us up for something big, something great for the life and legacy, even of TWC. OK, I also remind me, look, somebody just put down there, put it, put a little reminder towards the end. I have a huge announcement, huge announcement at the end of service, but I'll make sure that everybody is in and engaged and involved so that you're able to hear some of the next steps that TWC is taking as we are transitioning inside of this post-COVID experience, okay? Today, we're going to the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter. And before I pray for us, I want you all to just begin to open up your hearts, your ears, and your minds to receive what God wants to speak to us on today, because it has really blessed me even inside of my own personal studies, and I just hope and I pray that it blesses you as well, okay? So let's pray, and then we're going to jump straight inside of the word, okay? God, we thank you for this day. Good morning, God. We thank you for the grace and mercy that you have given us inside of this breath we call life. Now, God, we ask that your presence be made known inside of this sermon, that, oh God, even inside of this virtual experience, that you would allow your power to flow throughout the screen, that you would allow your power to flow throughout the airways and that people listening, people watching will be able to hear your word, not my word, oh God, but they'll be able to hear your word and what it is that you desire for them to do inside of their lives. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you just for your grace, just for your mercy, just for your love and where you're taking us inside of this new direction inside of our lives. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 Look, it is that time of the year. It is that time of the year. Summertime is upon us, and one of the things that I used to love, one of the things I used to love doing uh, growing up, um, and actually it was, it, was, it was sponsored by my church, but every year they used to take the youth, uh, specifically the boys, would go off on a retreat. Back in New Friendship Baptist Church in Baltimore, would go off on, on a retreat. I'll never forget the very, very first year um, that I went. Um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was It was interesting. It was about 30 to 40 men or should I say gentlemen, um, all between the age, I think it was probably like nine to like 18 is what it was. And we got out there inside of the woods and we were camping. We weren't inside of like a tent. It was more of a uh, youth facility kind of thing. I remember going out there and I remember uh, uh, scraping my knee on a log. I remember playing softball. I remember literally jumping inside of a creek in order to swim. There were no swimming pools and whatnot, but I remember jumping inside of a creek in order to swim. And I've always loved the outdoors. I've always loved the mountains. I've always loved, you know, the, the cabin experience. Uh, my family and I, we've actually gone to the cabins on, on quite a few times. I just love nature, love being outside, the sound of the birds, the wind, whole nine yards. And uh, when it comes down to camping, I've never done the whole tent experience. Okay, that is something that maybe one one, one of these days I'll do maybe with uh, one of the one of the uh, one of the uh, kids. Um, but the whole tent experience is something that I've never done. I've never done the, the tent experience, but it is something that I've always wanted to do. And we find inside of the text as, as, a, as a precursor to our story inside of Exodus chapter 19 that we have the people of Israel. We have the people of Israel that have now come out of Egypt being led by Moses. Some of us might be familiar with the story. The people of Israel, God's people, had been in slavery for so long. And God finally delivers them out of the hand of Pharaoh under the government of Egypt and delivers them through the hands of Moses and his leadership. And what happens before we get to this, before we get to this element of the text 
is you have the plagues that happen. You have this huge exodus. This is what the um, uh, what the book of Exodus is all about. This huge exiting of the people. What was interesting inside of the text is that God takes the Israelites. He takes his people from an established system inside of Egypt, from an established government inside of Egypt, from an established leadership inside of Egypt, and literally drops them in the middle of the wilderness. And my question to you all on this morning is this, and I need y'all to really, really um, engage with me this morning because this really blessed me. Sometimes you might feel as though God is transitioning you from something that is established into something new and different and foreign. See, here's the thing. You might feel as though God is transitioning you from an established career to start something new and start something different and maybe starting your own business. You might be feeling as though or experiencing inside of your relationships that God is ready to move you and transition you from something established. Maybe you're experiencing a divorce. Maybe you're experiencing a breakup or a separation. And now God is moving you from something established into something new and different. You might even be thinking with regards to your finances that that you've got this that you've got this this great plan, you've got this great budget, you've got something established. But now God wants to transition you to be a giver, okay, to the church or God wants you to to give more to nonprofit organizations into something new and into something different. See, even with regards to like our education system, there has been this establishment over this last, you know, couple of decades with regards to the in-class experience, with regards to a teacher and students and blackboards and, and computers and smart boards and whatnot. And maybe God doesn't want you to do that. You know, that those the, the, the way of learning that we did back, back in my day, you know, for elementary, middle school and high school. Maybe God wants to move you into something new, something foreign, something different, maybe a, a hybrid experience, maybe um, just uh, an online experience. Maybe you're coming from not being in school for so long. Maybe you've been out of school for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, and you already have this established life over here, and now God wants to transition you into something new and different and re or, or, or reapplying or, or getting or finishing that degree or finishing um, that program that you started many, many years ago. We find the people of Israel inside of the same situation. We find them leaving an established system in Egypt only for God to drop them in the middle of the wilderness. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was one of the Israelites, I would have looked at Moses at one point. And the Bible actually declares, and the Bible says that there are some people who did not make it to the promised land. I think that, that there were some people that actually did go back to Egypt. And even when we look at slavery, inside of modern day um, uh, times. There are a lot of people and a lot of individuals, I know myself included, where if I'm leaving something established, I'm inside of my comfort zone. I'm inside of a place that I know. I'm inside of a place that at the end of the day, it's very, very familiar. I'm inside of a place that at the end of the day, I know how this works. And now I get out here to the wilderness and Moses, you telling me that um, you ain't got no food? Okay, we had food in Egypt, but Moses, now you're telling me we ain't got no food. So how, how, how in the world are we going to eat? So you're, you're over in Egypt, we, we had water and milk and honey. And you're telling me that you're ready to take me to a land of milk and honey. Well, Moses, we ain't at the land of milk and honey right now. We're in the wilderness. And this message this morning, this message today, whenever you're watching this, is designed for people who might feel as though you are in the wilderness right now. You aren't where you used to be inside of that comfortable place, but then you also aren't where God wants to take you inside of the new place. You might find yourself in the wilderness. Let's look at the text. Let's look at the text as we get ready to go camping this morning. The book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, verses 1 and 2 is all we're looking at. The Bible declares, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, it says, Exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. After breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. 
Now, there are so many things. I know that, that typically when, when, when pastors and preachers read texts like that, a lot of people sit on their chairs with great anticipation and say, okay, well, where in the world is he going with this? Because there's really not much that was said inside of, the, inside, inside of that text. But watch this. There's actually a lot that's being said inside of this text. Because like I said, number one, the people of the, 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 the Israelites are, are, in, are in a place of transition. And this is also just before they receive the Ten Commandments. From Moses, when Moses goes up to the top of the mountain, comes back down with the Ten Commandments. They're actually right at right at the point before they receive the Torah, the Law, okay, or these Ten Commandments. Now look what it says: it's exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt. Now it was two months, okay. This wasn't a um, uh, God take us from Egypt and draw us inside of the Promised Land. Okay, no, this wasn't a God deliver us from Pharaoh and now give us our own system. No, no, no. This wasn't God put me inside of my comfort zone, or should I say take me out of my comfort zone and put me inside of a new comfort zone. No, 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 no. The Bible declares that it was two whole months and they still had not made it to the promised land. They had just made it to Mount Sinai and it was two months that had lapsed by before they had actually made camp inside of the wilderness. And one of the things that got dropped inside of my spirit as I was studying this and as I was looking at this, and I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but there is going to be a time lapse between where God is taking you from to where God is bringing you into. See, here's the thing. We don't serve, I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, we don't serve a microwave kind of God. OK, and look, we've actually and I know a lot of pastors and preachers have always said that. And I think that we can kind of um, uh, revisit that statement. We don't serve an air fryer kind of God. OK, we don't serve a TV dinner kind of God. OK, we don't serve an instant rice kind of God. No, no, no. We serve the kind of God that at the end of the day, there is going to be a lapse of time between where God wants to take you from to where God wants to bring you into. Now, two months, the Bible says, had lapsed by. And I know that sometimes inside of our lives, we don't want to wait. There are so many times inside of our lives where we get impatient. There's so many times inside of our lives where we are praying, God, you took me out of this one situation, but God, please hurry up and get me inside of the new situation. And what God told me to tell somebody this morning is that there has to be a waiting period. And within that waiting period, you need to spend time talking to God, building better relationships with God, building better relationships with yourself, spending time in prayer and meditation and scripture reading in order, in order for you to prep for the new area, the new, um, the new opportunity opportunity, the new realm that God is ready to bring you into. See, God, like I said, isn't just going to pick you up out of one situation and just drop you inside of another situation. That's what's wrong with a lot of people's relationships. Who am I talking to this morning? I feel like preaching. That's what's wrong with a lot of people's relationships, okay? You dump him or her on Friday, and then by Sunday, you're already on a date with somebody else. See, here's the thing. You have not given yourself time enough to heal or even to process the ending of one relationship before you jump inside of another relationship, okay? This is one of the reasons why some people don't transition as it relates to their career as well, because they put in their two weeks notice, and they end one job on Friday, and then pick up the next job on Monday, and you have not had enough time or space to really clear yourself, to clear your head, to clear your space in order to prep for the new area that God is bringing inside of your life. And what God is declaring this morning is that there are going to be some times inside of your life where you are just going to have to give it time. Two months had last by. Exactly two months. After the Israelites left Egypt, the Bible declares that they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. Like I said, that there are going to be opportunities, there are going to be situations inside of your life where your arrival will not be your destination. I want y'all to I want y'all to say that. That just because you've arrived at a certain place does not mean that that place is your destination. I'm gonna say that one more time because this thing just blessed me in a way that that y'all 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 just don't understand. They arrived in the wilderness. 
but they had not made it to their destination yet. And I want to encourage somebody this morning to let you know that where you are, just because you have arrived, that is not your final destination. Just because you are inside of this environment, this environment is not your final destination. Just because you are inside of this specific relationship, inside of this specific job, with the specificities of, 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 of your educational pursuit, with the specificity of uh, with the specificities of, of, of your financial pursuit, at the end of the day, just because you have arrived inside of the wilderness, the wilderness is not your final destination. Who am I preaching to this morning? God wants you to know that you might have to spend time in the wilderness before you get to your final destination. And at the end of the day, that is 100% okay. I'm sure that there are some people that Moses was looking back at. And Moses looked back and said, look, y'all, we're ready to, we, 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 we've left Egypt. And we're not at Canaan yet. We're not at the promised land yet, but we're ready to pitch tent. We're ready to set up camp right here. I'm sure that there were some people that was looking at Moses and said, now you promised us a promised land, but why are we setting up tent? Why are we setting up camp here inside of the wilderness? Watch the transition that happens. Watch the transition that happens inside of the text because you have to really do a word study of the text before you can understand why this wilderness experience was so important. Look at what it says inside of verse two. It says, after breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Now, if you read that on the onset, you, you might just automatically think and imagine that they were in one place, transitioned to another place, and that was it. But if you, do a, if you do a word study, if you do a word study of the text, the Hebrew, the Hebrew, and I'm not one of those kind of practices and preachers that like to just spit out Hebrew words and whatnot. I'm just going to give you what the definition is and just, just take it for what it is, okay? The first time camp is used inside of verse 2, it's a pluralistic camp. Meaning that they camped. They packed up camp from Rephidim and settled camp. The second time that the word is used, it's used singularly. In other words, they picked up camp, but when they settled camp, they were one body. And what God dropped inside of my spirit, I don't know who needs to hear this on this morning, but in your transition. From one camp to the next, God is ready to pull together the pieces and unify whatever it is that is scattered inside of your life. Now, I don't know if I'm just not seeing no hearts or not seeing no likes or not seeing any amens. Maybe my, maybe, maybe, maybe my glasses are dirty, but that thing just blessed me. Because we need to know that although our life might be so scattered, Although our life might be so out there, although our life might be, you know, in, in, in complete chaos and in complete disarray, the second that you choose to move camp, God is ready to do something, watch this, in your transition. God is ready to do something in your transition, just like he did with the people of Israel. They picked up camp as as they picked up camp as families and as tribes and as all of these people just out there doing whatever they wanted to do. But the Hebrew says that they drop camp as one body. And my question to you all is this, are you willing to pick up camp, the pluralistic, pick up all the pieces of that broken relationship? Pick up all the pieces of that broken educational pursuit. Pick up all the pieces of that, of, 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 of those financial decisions that you made that now have you inside of that financial crisis that you're in. Pick up all the pieces of whatever it is that, of whatever it is that you are in and have gone through and move camp. God says, God told me to tell somebody this morning, it is time to move camp. It is time for you to pick up the pieces. It is time for you to do what I have told you to do and keep moving, keep transitioning and know you're not going to get to your destination. Know you're not going to get to where I want you to be, but where I'm ready to drop you in the wilderness is the place that I'm ready to bless you. Because I watch this, the people of God could not receive the Ten Commandments inside of the new city. They could not receive the Ten Commandments inside of Canaan. No, no, no. They had to receive it inside of the wilderness. Why? Because when you receive God's promise in the wilderness, you appreciate it better once you get to the promised land. I don't know who needs to hear that this morning. But you need to know 
that God was with you and that God had and that, and that God made provision for you, that God was walking right there beside you in the wilderness. And he's not just going to drop you off into your promised land. No, he's ready to walk into the promised land with you. I don't know who needs to hear it on this morning, but you are ready to set up camp in the wilderness. And that is not a bad thing. It is in the wilderness that you are in, that you are learning how to pray. It is in the wilderness that you are in, that you are learning how to seek God. If if it is in the wilderness that you are in that you are learning how to meditate and focus your energy. It is in the wilderness that you are in that is only making you stronger. It is in the wilderness that you are in that you are learning how to survive. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you might feel as though you are in survival mode. You are in survival mode in your relationship. You are in survival mode with your finances. You are in survival mode with your educational pursuit. You are in survival mode. And I want you to know, just like Beyonce and Destiny's Child said, that you are a survivor because you have not given up. And just like the Israelites got dropped inside of the wilderness and had to learn how to survive, had to learn how to find food, had to go and had 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 had, um, um, had Moses um, had to go and hit the rock in order to get water out of it. God had to send manna, quail down from heaven just to be their provision. If God can provide for you in the wilderness, and we have seen it over this past year with regards to COVID and this pandemic, if God can provide for you inside of this wilderness experience, it is only a testament of what God is about to do once you get to the promised land. Because the Bible even declares that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for you. And I want to encourage somebody this morning that God has something in store for you, but you've got to go through that wilderness experience. You're going to have to have your heart broken. You're going to have to have some bills get behind. You're going to have to fail a couple of classes. You're going to have to get told no at a couple of job interviews. You're going to have to, they're, they're going to have to be some doors shut in your face before God opens up the right door for you. When you are setting up camp, inside of this thing called life, because watch this, look, watch this. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm running out of time. I hope this is good for y'all. It says they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai after breaking camp at Rephidim. They came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp at the base of Mount Sinai. I'm almost done. Now, typically, historically speaking, also strategically speaking, is this good for y'all? When you set up camp somewhere and you're at a mountain, most times you want to set up camp at the top of the mountain, okay? Most times you want to set up camp at a place and you want to do it at the top of a mountain because should an enemy try to come up against you, you're able to see what's around you. But the Israelites, they set up base, or should I say they set up camp at the base of the mountain. And... When I asked the text the question, I asked God the question, I said, okay, God, why, why didn't you have them go up the mountain? Why didn't you have them uh, set up a, a better protective barrier for themselves? Why did you have them at the base? Why did you have them at the beginning? And you know what God told me to tell somebody this morning is that there are going to be times inside of your life where you're going to have to start at the base and where God is going to plant you at the base for a reason. I want y'all to hear this in the spirit. I need y'all to catch this in the spirit this morning. The people of God were at the base of Mount Sinai. It's in the scriptures and verses later that we see that Moses goes to the top of Mount Sinai in order to get the Ten Commandments in order to bring down the blessing to the people. I don't know who needs to hear this. As a matter of fact, I do know who need I do know who needs to hear this because I know y'all are gonna y'all are gonna go crazy on this Facebook Live. God has placed you at the base of the mountain because Jesus is ready to go to the top of the mountain on your behalf 
intercede for you on your behalf and bring back the blessing that is needed for you to get to that promised land. I don't know who needs to hear it this morning, but you are not at the base for no reason, okay? You are at the base of the mountain because at the end of the day, God says that you have traveled and traversed long enough. You are at the base of the mountain because you have you have put in the work long enough. You're at the base of the mountain because baby boy, baby girl, you don't feel as though, and God knows that you can't climb no more. You can't walk no more. You you might be running out of faith. And at the end of the day, God says that you don't have to climb any more mountains. I'm ready to climb the mountain for you and get the promises that you deserve. The work that you have put in, the things that you have done, the way that God is ready to bless you. Guess what? You don't have to climb. You don't have to do... Jesus, the Bible declares us out of the New Testament that Jesus makes intercession for us. What that means is that we don't, our prayers might not always make it. Or it might seem as though our prayers don't always make it to God's ear. But because Jesus knows our hearts, he intercedes for us and tells God exactly what we need and then brings it back to us. I don't know who needs to hear it on this morning, but you are at the base, not as a punishment. You are at the base because you are ready to be used for God's convenience. God is ready to bring you something down from the mountain that you didn't even have to climb to get. I almost ran around my house just now. I need somebody to put that inside of the comments. God is ready to bring you something down from the mountain that you did not even have to climb to get. And that is the good news. That is the good news of this text. That although they left a place of comfort, they were dropped inside of the wilderness. They were dropped inside of the wilderness, scattered and broken, broken people and broken relationships coming from a broken slave system. Inside of their transition from one place to the next, God unifies them as a people. God unifies them as a camp. And then he drops them at the base of the place that he wants to bless them. But he doesn't just drop them at the base for no reason. He drops them at the base because he wants to bring them from the top what they need at the bottom. And God says that you don't have to always make it to a hundred. If you can just meet me at 50, I will go to the hundred and bring you back the other 50. If you can just meet God halfway, that's one of the reasons why the, that's one of the reasons why the Bible says inside of the New Testament that faith without works is dead. God says, I've seen your work, I've seen your travailing, I've seen what it is that what it is that your heart's desire is now it's my turn to do the work moses probably looked back at the people and when he got up to the mountain we'll talk about this next week when he got there to the bottom of the mountain he probably looked back at the people and was like these people are going to kill me if i don't get them to this promised land but what the people had to trust was that Moses was leading them in a direction that was better than where they came from. And I don't know who needs to hear it on today, that although where you were, that although whatever it is that you were coming from might have felt good, and whatever it is that you are in now, that wilderness, that wilderness experience does not feel good, where God is ready to take you, is ready to be better than where you've come from. It's ready to be better than where you've been. It's ready to be more joyous, more so, so, so much more joy, so much more peace, so much more love, so much more abundance is ready to take place inside of your life. But you've got to get through the wilderness. You've got to set up camp inside of the wilderness. And at the end of the day, God told me to tell somebody, don't rush the wilderness experience. Just like they were out there for that, just like they were out there for two months up until this point inside of the text, you might have to be inside of the wilderness. You might have to pitch tent for some time before God brings you out. One of the uh, shows that my wife and I used to love to watch was, uh, was uh, Naked and Afraid. Because they would just drop people out there and they would try to survive and see how long they could how, how long they could last inside of all of these, you know, different conditions. But one of the interesting things about that show that we that we began to realize is that at the end of the day, they aren't just gonna let these people go out there and die. Okay, that would not be a good show. You know, people would probably get sued to the nth degree if they just went out there and, and just let these people die. And the same thing applies to your life. 
that although God has dropped you in the wilderness naked and afraid, God is not going to let you die. God is not going to let you be unsuccessful. God is not going to let you fail. So set up camp and then trust that God is going to take you from the wilderness and into your promised land. Can I get an amen? Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for this opportunity of gathering and sharing. Now, God, we ask inside of this moment that you give us the courage that we need to move from one level of comfort inside of our lives and pitch camp inside of the wilderness. For God, there are some things that you're going to teach us inside of the wilderness, that there are some things that you're going to bring together inside of the wilderness, that you are going to drop us off at the base of the mountain that you want to bless us from. And we thank you for this experience. Now, God, we ask that you continue to stretch our faith, give our faith the boost that it needs to keep pushing, to keep fighting, to keep being persistent. Because God, some of us feel as though that we are in survival mode, but let us know that we are survivors because we have your grace, your mercy, and your love behind us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Look, I need you all to do me a favor. Jump over to our website right now. I need you all to give, sow a seed into our ministry. There are some great things that, that we are doing at the worship center. Give your best gift over at the website, www.twcatl.org. You can also give via PayPal. You can give via Cash App, dollar sign, TWCATL. You can give via Zelle. A lot of people feel more comfortable giving Zelle, um, uh, giving through Zelle with regards to their bank account. So it's very, very safe and secure. You can use the church's email address for that. Look, the first Friday in July. The first Friday in July, we are going to be jump-starting, re-kicking off our first Friday homeless feeding. Woo! Now, there are some things, there are some precautions that we're going to be taking in place as we begin to reintroduce ourselves to the community with regards to community service, we want to make sure that everyone is safe and accounted for. So listen, if you want to be a part, if you want to volunteer, I first need you all to text the number that is located inside of the description to make sure that you are abreast um, with regards to protocol and signing up whole nine yards. There are some things that we're going to put in place, like I said, with regards to safety procedures to make sure that everyone is safe, those that we are serving and also those that are that those that we are serving as well as those that are serving okay so make sure that you all are in that text group it's going to be a very very um simple setup there is going to be a limited number of volunteers that we'll be taking out at a time until things kind of you know really really get back to normal look i want you all to keep the worship center in prayer i want you all to keep us in prayer because there are some great and powerful things that I believe that God is ready to do and that God is really, really ready to bring us some blessings down from the mountain, although it might seem as though that we've set up camp at the base of the mountain, okay? So again, thank you all so much for connecting uh, with us and for helping us to continue our vision and our mission of connecting people back to God and humanity. Do me a favor, hit that share button, hit the like button, share this word with somebody. If it has blessed you in any way, shape, or form, partner with us partner with us in our ministry because there are great things to come dare to dream and i'll see you all either next week for sunday worship or on wednesday night for our virtual bible study peace and blessings